Before you guys listen to the stories, could you please help support us by liking and subscribing to this new channel? Most of you watching aren't subscribed, so please help us grow. We really appreciate it. Now on to the stories. When my brother first showed me the dark web, I thought he was messing with me. See, the sites look all basic and janky, he said. But that's the mystery, you can find crazy stuff if you know where to dig. I watched unsure as he clicked around forums filled with random numbers and inside jokes. It all seemed shady yet harmless enough. I mostly go on there for pranks and tricks, he grinned. Watch this. A few code lines later, he remotely activated a neighbor's sprinkler system, soaking them as they retrieved the mail. We cracked up at the confused looks toward clear skies. Here, try some searches, he said, handing me the keyboard. Nervously, I typed in my name, then our address, stunned when full identity profiles appeared listing details like our mom's maiden name and dad's first job. Before I could react, a message popped up, having fun, visitor 5482. My brother's eyes widened as more texts flooded the screen. The dark web sees all, and beware what watches back through unprotected eyes. He yanked the plug in panic, and the messages vanished instantly with the lost connection. Just some hacker screwing around trying to scare us, he shrugged it off. But I couldn't shake the vulnerability exposed by our peak under society's masks, where prying eyes study more than most realize about private lives. Over the next weeks, strange things started happening. Lost packages, credit cards deactivated unexpectedly, emails appearing in spam chains I never signed up for. Then one night, awake way past midnight reading online, I clicked a sidebar ad by accident thinking it part of my site's layout. Instantly warning messages flashed that my IP address was compromised and files were downloading from my hard drive without permission. Frantically I ran antivirus scans, changed passwords, even factory reset my laptop hoping to purge the invasive software. Soon odd pop-up questions appeared when I opened standard programs like who was your first kiss? Then later, where did you travel for spring break in 10th grade? I realized in horror that a stranger was accessing my own laptop to mine data about me, maybe even watching my camera at that very moment. I covered all lenses with tape and avoided the device for days, but curiosity drew me back, my compulsively checking if random glitches were merely harmless tech quirks rather than a persisting digital intruder. I constantly peered over my shoulder now, unnerved by the chilling revelation that beyond our walls existed uninvited others scrubbing openly through our intimate details as casually as reading fiction titles on a bookshelf. My horror deepened returning home from school one afternoon to witness all smart devices in my house suddenly turn on at once blaring cacophonous static, followed by several popping smoke and fizzling out. Mom and Dad rushed around pulling plugs in dismay as I stood dumbstruck. Someone clearly sent a powerful electric surge by remote command specifically to overwhelm our personal equipment. Glimpsing in our dad's office later, I spied the fried computer and cold sweat broke out recalling I'd done homework searches just last week about electromagnetic weapon blueprints while using his unlocked desk. This felt like a personalized warning. The faceless hackers could see even our most private activities within these violated walls. No method safeguarded us it seemed from the relentless ghost in this machine. So that day I warned my family, and in despair at losing all sense of security in our lives, and even bodies bugged by minds wirelessly tampering devices, to spark and smoke at their whims, we went entirely off-grid. Casting away our digital chains let us reclaim real-world sanctuary, again free from prying eyes that glared hidden through pixelated portals scattered dangerously in the very technology tools proclaimed progress. While society expanded connections online, losing sight behind those access points lurked the unseen costs, shadowing anyone boldly yet navely wandering unaware past virtual warning signs, blinking beware what watches back through unprotected eyes. When the first message appeared, I felt more confused than scared. The email had been sent to an old address I rarely checked, from someone whose handle was just a random string of numbers and letters. It simply said, I know where you work, Amanda. The cafe window frames you beautifully while steaming milk. A harmless poetic admirer. Unlikely, but I brushed it off. The next week when I logged into an old photography forum to share some scenic pics, a comment popped up instantly. Stunning captures. Not as beautiful as you on the forest trail today, though. My stomach dropped. 
No one knew I hiked mid Zion earlier, dressed in cognito in case paparazzi spotted me, a minor local celebrity. I dug into the user profile, but it offered no real clues, a digital ghost. That night, deep on conspiracy sites tracing the account links, I discovered whispers of a hidden collective. Anonymous users tracking targets through glimpsed reflections, social media posts, hashed online payments, tiny digital breadcrumbs forming patterns to identify, expose, exploit. My anxious mind raced wondering what private aspect of my real life hid openly online for them to piece together so intrusively. Soon messages flooded across my digital platforms from various numbered accounts, reflecting aspects only my closest friends knew. Weekend plans, salon appointments, even presents I opened in the privacy of home. Each time the notes ended ominously, I am always watching you, Amanda. Once while Googling, ads flashed for lace lingerie and nearby hotels. Things I merely discussed with my sister earlier. Proof they listened through my phone. Driving aimlessly to escape watchful walls, I spotted a black SUV making the same odd turns as me. Panicked, I raced home and covered all cameras, fearful to leave again. Days later, starving for groceries but terrified to venture out, my doorbell camera played footage of a gift basket appearing mysteriously on my porch. The attached card simply featured an winking emoji. My hands shook realizing nowhere felt safe from their infiltrating reach. That week strange men approached me with covered envelopes, demanding odd one-time payments then scurrying off. Hackers wiping my accounts, I presumed. Soon getting dressed became torture. Was I glimpsed through compromised laptop cams, viewed illicitly through illegally accessed smart home monitors. Everywhere technology touched now it seemed a window for faceless invaders to peer at intimate moments deep within my home. Withdrawn entirely from a digitally exposed world, I still felt watched, spyware on my devices, bugs in every room recording private conversations. Nowhere existed free from their hidden eyes judging, following, toying sinisterly with my fractured sense of security, even the most visceral safe spaces. Until finally, pushed past wit's end, I destroyed everything, smashed all devices, ripped out cameras, severed every wired threat that tethered my peace of mind to their sick viewing pleasure. Dark silent days followed where I rarely slept, jumping at. Every stray sound, without digital sight I was blind to, no way to research my tormentor's identities, motives, or methods. Until one humid night as I dozed lightly amid sweaty sheets with barred windows shut, a video call screeched from my laptop discarded under the bed weeks before. Cowering in the corner, I stared frozen as it projected onto the bare wall, revealing a familiar smiling face monitoring me through the built-in webcam. My sister grinned and waved, Don't worry Amanda, I'm always watching over you. When I first stumbled on the Hidden Boulevard forum, I felt a dark fascination luring me to keep scribbling through the discussions. I accessed the site on an encrypted browser while researching controversial message boards, curious about unmonitored discourse away from public social media's watchful policies. Most of the site looked purposefully nondescript, text posts with standard upvote buttons, basic usernames like User12 and DarkFury77 commenting banalities about work commutes and favorite brands, exactly the kind of mundane material one would expect for anonymous users keeping identities discreetly vague. But tucked in a private subforum mask cleverly behind a gallery of German expressionist paintings, I discovered something more disturbing. Users openly discussed weapons modifications and tactical offenses in chilling detail, even posting photos from ranges and backwoods survivalist training camps. The deeper I read, the worse it became in echoes of violence and extremism. Some reference cleansing society through decisive actions then retreating safely off-grid while others debated legal technicalities that terrorist acts could potentially skirt under free speech rights. A few appeared to be coordinating meetups for combat and arms training in remote locations nationwide. These felt like the kinds of dangerous radicals and domestic terrorists my civics teacher, once warned always lurked in the darkest corners of unrestrained ideology and internet immunity. Uneasily, I clicked away, unable to unsee the violently grandiose rhetoric and cold precision with which they encouraged each other's anti-social conditioning. Still, morbid curiosity drew me back over the next weeks to check that specific subforum, gawking from behind a screen barrier that felt increasingly flimsy against the hostility brewing there. 
The further their talks progressed into concrete attack plans instead of mere troubled musings, the more I realized inaction made me complicit with whatever chaos they chose to unleash. But reporting the site's activities to authorities also seemed risky if word got back to those volatile users about my exposures. Surely their catches of weapons and tunnel vision conviction in destructive missions signal the readiness to kill any perceived enemies or snitches. So in cowardly silence, I continued monitoring the escalating rhetoric, telling myself awareness prevented greater ignorance that allowed sociopathic mentalities to slip under society's radar, then emerge heavily armed before unsuspecting innocence had any chance of response. The longer I lurked though, the more my complacency choked me with guilt, knowing I did nothing while these American terrorists moved ever closer to irreversible violence, almost certainly ending in tragedy, perhaps on a mass scale. The damning truth crystallized upon reading a post with my area code listed as the next recon spot for their ongoing perversions of legal firearms training. Would my neighbors soon hear gunshots echoing from nearby woods? How long before stray bullets pierced through our flimsy drywall while we sat down for family dinners? Or worse, would calculated killers emerge one day soon from camouflage bunkers tucked secretly so close behind familiar trees and street signs we passed daily without realizing what now lurked so near? I realized an action was its own action endorsing harm by forfeiting choices before me. So I contacted an investigative journalist known for breaking controversial stories from dubious insider tips. Encrypting my identity, I directed them to the deeply buried subforum, sending screenshots of recent activity and noting the pattern of escalation over previous months. The intrepid reporter assured me they would pursue undisclosed sources to verify the credibility of attacks potentially being coordinated through this hidden digital cover that protected those accelerating radicalization. I ceased accessing the site, unwilling to witness further damning posts goading each other toward irreparable violence. The wait stretched long, my conscience weighing how many days or crimes passed while officials scrambled to prove legally actionable threats. Until late one night a rapid knock at my front door jerked me awake. I crept to peer outside but saw only darkness. Spying an envelope on the welcome mat, I opened it warily. Inside was a brief note with a link to a national news expose about a chilling terror plot disrupted just in time. Investigators credited an anonymous internet tip for helping crack the case, warning far too often sociopaths and terrorists hide in plain sight behind unassuming masks only to methodically emerge later heavily armed and emboldened for destruction by digital echo chambers. While society praises expanded connections and freedoms the internet offers in linking kindred minds, the reporter cautioned we lost sight of how unguarded spaces also cloak dangers. For granting platforms to speak or train recruits cannot obligate truth in users' intentions, no matter the rights they invoke to mask hatred and extremism. So while touting transparency, we must temper liberty with wisdom toward what breeds in shadows when unchecked ideology devolves. I shredded the chilling note, willing to stay unseen knowing the unpredictability of zealots who perceive everything in absolutes. Just grateful that for once fortune spared tragedy by an alert citizen trusting subtle signs, even amidst digital disguises seeking to normalize the violently unacceptable through mass desensitization online. Our connected age's irony preaches judging not lest ye be judged, meanwhile requiring moral courage to judge what objective harm breeds beyond virtual veils before it emerges guns blazing behind very real masks.